this is question four from paper one from the Ordinary Level 2020 Leaving Cert exam. Up the top right, you'll find a playlist that has the solutions to all the questions from this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it in your own time before looking at my solution. In this question, they ask a few different ideas, but it all revolves around the idea of painting the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to have to convert uh, units. We're going to have to write things in scientific form. And even in part B, we're going to just do an, an, a separate algebra question. So they, they also give us this picture of a block. Uh, I've added in some extra lines so we can see it clearer. It's one meter by one meter. But they also tell us it's 3.28 feet by 3.28 feet. And this is to help us out, uh, especially these extra lines I've drawn, it's to help us out. Students so many times uh, write things like, so let me write like this, one meter is equal to 3.28 feet. They tell us this in the question. So many students then write things like one meter squared is equal to 3.28 feet squared. That is not true. Let me rub that out. And it's easy to see once I've drawn these extra lines in. Here's a square meter, the, the black box. The red boxes are all square feet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then a little extra, little bits extra everywhere. So there's probably 10, maybe 11 square feet in there. So we can see that that number is not correct. The correct way to do it is, how many square feet are in this box? We just multiply 3.28 by 3.28. It's also quite easy to see in maths. One meter squared is the same as one meter squared, if we write it like this, is equal 3.28 feet squared. That's the same as 3.28 squared and feet squared. It works quite easily like that, but it's easier to see from the picture. 3.28 multiplied by 3.28 will get, uh, I'll have to check my notes on this one, it's 10.6. 7584. We're not going to need all these places, but it comes out evenly enough. That's a feet squared. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's how we convert meter into feet. Now, the problem is this question they tell us there's 10 million square feet. How many meters? So we need to just go backwards. Uh, but that's not too hard. If we set it up like this, one meter squared converts into, I, I write anything here. Some people write equals. I don't like to write equals too much, but equals is fine. We're just going to play around with some things here. That converts into 10.7584 feet squared. At the end of this, I would like to be able to change 10 million. 10 mil, um, you know what, will I write out to 10 million or will I write it in some, you know, I will write just 10 million for now. But I could have wrote that as 1 times 10 to the seven. I'll talk more about changing between these at the end of the question, but it's good if you get used to doing this. Most calculators will do it for you though, is the good news. If you type this in, it will give this as an answer. If you type this in, it will change to this if you need it. So I'd like to find out what 10 million goes towards. Here's how I do it. I change things into one. One is really easy to deal with. If I had a one here, it's easy to get from 1 to 10 million, just multiply it by 10 million. But it's also easy to get from anything to 1. If I just divide this number by itself, I get 1. And on this side, if I divide whatever is this side by it, 10.7584, this, this relationship will still equal. 1 foot squared will equal, and if I divide that in, let me check my notes again. I get, let me rub this out because I don't have much room. I get 0 0.09925, I believe. I think that's rounded off though. That's meters squared. It's now quite easy to go from one foot squared to 10 million feet squared. Just multiply them by 10 million. Multiply this by 10 million. I get, uh, let's see, 9255, and how many zeros will we have? Two, so that's nine nine hundred twenty five thousand five hundred. Actually, this would be a good example why it would have been easier to use scientific notation. 
So let's, uh, let's, so this is our answer. A set, they would like it written in the form of a times 10 to the power of n. That's scientific notation. It's, it's not too bad when the numbers are this big, but imagine if they got bigger. Like, uh, if there, imagine if there's another 10 zeros, which does happen in science all the time. Uh, we need an easier way to write it. So how we write this is simply, we get nine point, and we take as many digits as we want. In this case, they only ask for two significant ones. So that's nine and the two, the two rounds up to a three. So 9.3, here's a decimal place here. So how many times are we gonna move this decimal place to make it look like this? We go one, two, three, four, five. So let's see, let me do read it out. One, two, three, four, five. That's five decimal places. So if I've cheated, I've I've made it I've made it five times smaller or ten to the power of five times smaller. So I better write that in somewhere. And that's how we do scientific notation. This number is the same as this one. Well, rounded off. This number is the same as nine nine hundred and thirty thousand. And that's the answer they wanted. This was in in meters. This is square meters. Always check if your answer makes sense. It was ten million square feet. And it's 930,000 square meters. That makes, that makes rough sense. It, a meter is much bigger than a foot, so it should be less uh, meters. Okay, that's part A, part one. I hope I explained that okay. If I, you have any follow-up questions, put them in the comments below. But I'll, move, I'll rub this out and move on to part two. In part two, they tell us that a liter of paint um, used on the bridge can cover approximately five square meters. I've kept this number. This is the total number of meters on the bridge. So five square meters, um, sorry, one liter will cover five square meters. The paint comes in 25 liter tins. Find how much, how many tins of paint will need to do it. So uh, let's let's start this like this. Uh, one, one liter will do five, uh, five meters squared. What I'd like to get to on this conversion system I use, I'd like to get to this number, 9.3 times 10 to the five. This time I'll leave it in this, although it'll probably be easier to write it in normal fashion. But we did the previous part with numbers, this time we'll use a scientific notation. So how do I get five to this? You can do it directly, but I always like to use one. How do I get, turn this into one square meter? It's quite easy, divide by five. If I divided this side by five, I better divide one by five. One by five is 0 0.2. Okay, how do I get this into this form? Ah, yes, uh, multiplying nine point, yeah, if I say it that way, multiplying 9.3 times 0 0.2, well, multiplied by two, I get 18.6. And point, 18 um, divided by 10, because I didn't multiply by two, multiplied by 0 0.2 we'd get one point, I can write that down, 1.86, and then multiply by another 10 to the power of five. You know what, that's probably needlessly complicated because we all have calculators. Multiply this number here, 0 0.2, by this number, the calculator will tell us this number. And that's it, that's uh, how many liters it would take to uh, paint this bridge. So they, they didn't ask liters though, did they? They asked tins of paint. 25 liters is in every tin. So we just divide this number, 1.86 times 10 to the five, divided by 25. This is liters, this is liters, so that cancels. You don't, don't have to worry about that bit. And this will give you how many tins of paint. So once we divide that in, it, it goes in evenly, in fact, uh, 7,500, sorry, 7,440 tins of paint. So that's a, uh, how many tins of paint it takes to paint the Golden Gate Bridge. Now you know. <laughs> if you have any follow-up questions on this, put them in the comments below. I'll rub this out again and we'll do part B, which is unrelated to the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, part B gives this algebra equation here. Two to the power of nine X minus one is equal eight to the power of two X. Solve, or they say solve the equation. That really just means find X. When we're finished all of our work, I want X equals a number, hopefully. And that's all they want us to do. This is an interesting question because if you ask your friends that are in honors level or higher level, they have a different way to solve it. They'll use something called logarithmics, uh, which I'd say is probably easier to solve, uh, but they'll be given harder questions. Um, 
We don't use anything like that. To solve this, I, I'd like to just show you an idea, a simple idea, 3 to the power of x is equal 3 to the power of 2. If I asked you what x is, it'd be quite easy. Well, x is 2. 3 to the power of something is equal 3 to the power of, well, something, whatever that something is. So we can, if we're given something like this, where, where they both have a tree here, we can just rub the trees out and say, well, x equals 2. So that's, the, that's how we solve these ones in ordinary level. Because they'll only give us easy ones like that, where they're the same number. Now, they don't look like the same number. 2 and 8 do not look the same. But I can make them the same. And you'll always be given questions like this. There'll always be 2 and 8, or 2 and 4, or 3 and 9, or 3 and 27. These don't look the same, but we can make them into the same. I'll leave this here and show you how they're the same in a moment, actually. So in this case, we have, we'll make them both 2. Uh, 2 to the power of 9 minus x. Uh, 2 to the power of 9x minus 1 is equal to something here to the power of 2x. So I'm going to replace the 8. I'm going to replace the 8 with something. I'll replace the 8 with 2 to the power of 3. Because that's what 8 is. 8 is 2 to the power of 3. Just like over here, the 4 I could replace with 2 to the power of 2. The 9 I could replace with 3 to the power of 2. 27 I could replace with 3 to the power of, uh, sorry, 3 to the power of 3. These are all to the power of 1 this side. They're not equal either, so a bit confusing. <laughs> Let me rub that out before I confuse myself with that. Okay, so I, I've really just replaced the 8 with 2 to the power of 3. And the only problem with that is that we still have a little bit of work to do here. It's not too bad because we have rules about this. Let me look up. Oh, I have it in my notes. This is good. In your formula book, you'll have rules about indices. And one of the rules looks like this. It's uh, a to the power of... Uh, sorry, a to the power of p, which is also to the power of q. Sorry, my a's and q's look alike. I apologize for that. And that is equal to a to the power of pq. So that's what the rule says. If something, if there's a power of something outside something that else has a power, they just multiply. And that's what we're seeing here. This is outside, and this is the power of everything. So this is just going to be the same as 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2x. That's 6x. So that's all that changes into it. Um, now we can just get rid of these 2s. We can just ignore them. And we can just say 9x minus 1 is equal to 6x. We have quite a simple um, algebra question here. All the x's on the left will get 9x minus 6x, 3x. All the numbers on the right we get a minus 1 become a plus 1. And we're just uh, then divide both sides by the 3. x is equal 1 divided by 3. That's it. That's our answer. Um, and you can test this. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't need to say in part A at all. Uh, but we, could, we can test this quite easily. I say x is equal to 1 over 3. Check if I'm right. Put it in on a calculator. Put the, put the left-hand side in first. 2 to the power of 9 multiplied by 1 over 3 minus 1. Be careful when you put in a calculator. Lots of brackets. Um, see what number you get. I can't remember. I think, did I test this? I think you get 4 if you put it all in. And uh, the same over this side. Put um, 8 to the power of 2 multiplied by 1 over 3. And yes, you will get 4 on that side. So, and that agrees. 4 does equal 4. Therefore, this was the correct number. No other number could you put in and make it work. Right, I hope uh, that answers that part. Uh, once again, any questions, comments below. Do my best to get back to you. And until next time, have a great day.